back for the last game of the week, which is sad but happy because it's going to be Astralis versus Dusty. What's gonna happen? Okay, we'll start with you, Gob. Wait, you're Gober. not gonna go Dusty this time? Uh, no, of course I'm not gonna go Dusty <laughs> this time. I, I, they, they're obviously... I mean, okay, I'm not gonna say anything that, but uh, first off, uh, tied in predictions with Trouble, pretty good, pretty good, I'm pretty happy, thank you, bye for us for taking that one home. Um, but honestly, I think this matchup it can be interesting because if Astralis is showing the same kind of level they showed against Eminem, then I can easily see Dusty actually, high five, actually, uh, <laughs> actually contest them. <laughs> I need to rise. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on then. As you were saying? No, I think Trouble can pick up the point now. Makes a lot of I sense. I to you, man. Oh, okay. So I'll, <laughs> I'll repeat it to you again. I think if Astralis is, per is performing like they were against Eminem uh, with a slow gameplay, then they might be struggling a little bit because despite Dusty not being able to show up, you can see that they're still willing to pull the trigger. Um, so I definitely feel like that you cannot slow down as, uh, as Astralis. You have a lot of fine tuning to do after what happened last time. And for Dusty, this is just up to you to abuse that. I think if anything, you just go down the bot lane, right? I think Venza. Uh, and the bot lane in general had a pretty good game. Like, even in the previous one, even though you can argue the overextension underneath the tower. He had his positives. He got a yeah, 2v2 kill yeah, in the bot okay, lane. They did he... well, yeah, and then he screwed it up a little. I'll stay, but... on, I'll stay on the 2v2 kill because it seemed very decisive and the engage was pretty good and they were they were calling it as a team, right? So I think if you're going to fight through something, I think it has to be the, the bot lane. That means that you unfortunately have second pick on the ABC. Uh, unless you want to go with the Felus again, which I don't mind Venza if you take the uh, assassin emblem off of him so he doesn't find himself in the, the backline back again. Yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah. I think he's going to be more than fine. It's actually interesting in the draft now as well. You can see that they're clearly taking an approach against assassins, not only in the mid lane, but Diana also taken away on blue side, which is a very rare side as well. Usually we see that on red side just because of how powerful it is. You don't want to give it over to the blue side. Um, so far, Caitlyn has been removed as well. And all in all, not too many OPs just left that came the last one. Yep, that's the Twisted Fade. So you can first pick your AD carry if you want to now. Um, but there's also a ton of other options uh, you can go for. Obviously, Jinx and Ophelius can just be uh, traded in these situations. Honestly, here I would probably lock Aphelios uh, with Lulu yeah. together. Yeah, you just want to solidify that you have a really strong bot lane that can beat pretty much anything that you can 2v2 anyone with. I think this is the this is a clear path you can take. Or Jinx Lulu. I mean, it like doesn't matter. AD carry is fine. You just want the Lulu AD paired up with you it. Just yeah. want the, you just want to take away the Lulu at this point, and then you can leave your Zinzal Viego lease in for possibly like your third pick. Yeah, because there's no rush here. They already have their pick on the side of Astralis right now, so you just take a chill. Um, and I also think there's the fact that if you give over the Lulu when there's already a Hecarim, mm -hmm. you may be running into a few issues. So I just feel like this is a pick that you have to take away from them. Now, Kama is still up and available if you want to handshake a little bit of an Achana matchup as well. Obviously, Kama with the Mantra Shield in team fights uh, fares extremely well, both with your AD carry, but also with the Hecarim at the same time. So honestly, wouldn't be surprised to see Vendel bring that one out in this regard as well. Um, and outside of that, I guess you're just picking up an AD carry for Chris Ooh, Berg. But Ezreal Yumi or Ezreal Karma is not bad either. I mean, Yumi, yeah, yum, yum Yumi can... on the Hecarim is just, uh, is just pretty strong as well. The Karma is like, obviously, the LPL special, and it does really well, like you mentioned as well, into the, the Lulu. Wendell has played a ton of Karma in the past as well, so... So far, Astralis is looking pretty, pretty good here. I'm assuming, like, the call would be Zinza here. Try to create as much space as you can. Yeah. The Hecarim dives mm -hmm. and you throw him back out. Exactly. I think that's a really good shout. I think both compositions right now are looking to kind of do the same thing. Um, whereas the Zinza right now, if it does get locked in, is a bit more peeling. Obviously, it can jump into your face, but we're not thinking backline access when we're thinking Zinza. We're on the other side with the, with the Hecarim. Obviously, we're thinking about someone diving in. So either on Astralis' side, I'd like to see someone be able to pile in on that. I think Vex again for Cress would not be a bad shout. We saw how well he played, but I'm expecting that to be banned here when the second ban rotation is coming around. I'd really like a Renekton ban off of Carlson as well because he would always find the flanks in the back line when he was on the Renekton. And together with Carlson, I think they can completely decimate the back line or even split up the fight, right? So I think that should definitely be here the last ban unless they're scared of something particular in the mid lane. Vex. 
Either they're picking Vex themselves or they're banning it here. It, they, they I mean, it's not really bad picking it for yourself, right? No, no, they, they could easily go for it. And you can pin him in place and then you can throw him out with the Zenza. I wouldn't mind seeing Vex here as a blind pick. I think it's much scarier to have Carl's from the neck than they don't think so, though. No, I think, I mean, Renekton can be a bit difficult with the peeling that can come out from the side of, of Dusty. I'm assuming they might have to blind pick that. Once again, we're talking about blind pick top laners. They might be punished a little bit more, but GP and Orn is available, which is also the good blind pickable top laners. So I'd say right now, Dusty has a few steps they can take on the fourth pick. Either you just get a really good control maze you want to prioritize in this mid lane matchup, or you try and blind pick a top lane or anything and try to secure a good matchup for either your mid or top on so R5. You have to lock in possibly the GP because it's going to be a big nuisance for the Jinx. Uh, the Jinx later on if Carlson chooses to go for that one. It's not a bad shout. Like GP ultimate on top of Hecarim ultimate, that might be a little bit difficult to deal with. I think there's a lot of things Carlson can take to this approach. I'm more of a fan of the let me be a... Uh, see, it's interesting, right? Because I feel like they need a carry when they have the Estrel. I feel like they need some extra damage. So at first, I'm going like, oh, on pile up against that team conversation wouldn't be too bad. But then again, you you want Get to make mate. sure there's the damage yeah. in the back line as well for it. So so let's see what it's going to be piled up with. Hecarim and Orianna is almost a combo as old as time, right? It's literally just here. What she's about healed. Orianna Renekton, though? Ah, I mean, it might it's come even out. Juicier. It might come out, but we'll see what the, they have planned for themselves. Uh, Camille wouldn't be a bad shot here either. Yeah, can you pick as well? Much anything. Um, obviously, Renekton can come out on the other side, and then you'll play on a double blind pick. But you can clearly see that when you have Eshrel bot lane, you have room to put your resources up towards the top side instead, and you can try it and create a favorable 2v2. But trouble there is your prayers finally answered by Carl. Uh, I mean, it makes sense. The second that Zoe dives in, you can just stand her in place, and then when she goes back into her ultimate, the, the Hecarim just dives in together with the ball, and the Zoe disappears. I'm not particularly huge fun of the Zoe here because I don't necessarily fit it fits the comp because you want to protect the jinx so a control maze would have made much more sense for me for example a rise something along those lines uh the zoe throws me off a little bit on what they want to do because they also drafted for the mm. own so yeah you're giving zinza a lot of your priority but what do you do with that because Zoe's not really necessarily a roamer in the early game you just want to allow your jungler to make plays uh, but i don't see where you would make the plays right here well i definitely feel like both team compositions right now have a way they want to they want to play for right on the side of dusty you're definitely playing for your ad carry and on astralis actually I feel like they're going to be a bit slow because they don't have a specific lane to play for with setup. Orianna doesn't have setup before six. Renekton, you're playing against an Orn. It's going to be really hard killing him if you dive towards the top side. And bot lane, you're playing Estral and Karma. So I think most of, uh, of Tax's job really is just going to be jungle track and making sure that his lanes will not fall behind to since Sao ganking early. Um, and if you can go decently into the mid to late game, then you can try and out team fight them. Yeah. But I'd say both teams have tools to play for in these compositions. And again, Astralis comes in with a slow start. On the other side, Dusty can actually punish that and let's see what's yeah. going to happen. But before that, we have to send it to the casters. How are you guys feeling for the last game of the week? As Astralis playing a slow composition. Who would have guessed? Oh. Shocker. What a, what a shocker. Like. <laughs> the twist yeah, at the end. But it's, it's not a bad composition, though. They've got all of the tools that they need. It just might be something that doesn't get going as quickly. I mean, we talked about Dusty potentially coming on through and causing an upset by being more aggressive. They've drafted the more aggressive composition. Astralis have drafted their comfort. Henning, how are you feeling about this last game of the day? I mean, Astralis is going to have to to show up here. If they would lose this one, that would mean Astralis is like deep into a slump. Uh, like losing mm. twice in a row as a potential top team versus two of uh, two of the potentially weaker teams in the league. I think Astralis, they, there's a lot of pressure on them right now. They need to, sh to show up. And I think that if something would happen early, like maybe an aggressive early mid play from Viking and Backland, like shutting down Astralis early, they might get sort of nervous. And I mean, the pressure is really mounting up for them. It definitely could be. On the other side, of course, Dusty still haven't got a win yet. So going out of week two, zero, four would be not the optimal position to be in. And Astralis, as we know, yes, they might be a little bit slower. They might not have the explosive pace that a team like X7 have shown, but they can control the game very well. They have players who are capable of doing so. And of course, as Goldberg said, Tax's job is just going to be controlling the jungle matchup and making sure that Viking isn't able to get that aggression down. And if Dusty go 10, 15 minutes without being able to get a lead, then Astralis might start thinking, hey, now's our time to shine. Let's go online and 
start wrecking some faces, but as minions start clashing and jugglers both starting towards this top side, we'll have to wait and see what transpires. Yeah, I think if a jungler is going to be able to play aggressive early, I think it might be Viking. He is this like really smart and aggressive player, so I would not be surprised to see him try to make something happen early. I just remember the game on Monday where his bottom lane actually died level 2. I was speaking of bottom lane, they're trading sort of heavily here. Yeah, but on Monday his bottom lane died to a level 2 gank from a Zin Zhao, and he was really, really disappointed about that in the interview afterwards. Spoke about that as being sort of a turning point for the game, so picking the Sin Sao now himself, can he make something happen, and if so, in what lane? Well, Wendell forced to flash away early on by Dusty, hitting that level two first and getting some pressure down is going to be very, very useful because, of course, if Vedza can get a lead, then this Jinx comes online much sooner, and then Dusty's win condition starts looking a little bit easier. Yeah, absolutely. I think this game, looking at these two comps, it's basically going to be the battle of the AD carries, like Venser or Chrisberg, Jinx or Ezreal, who's going to be able to carry the game? Because the rest of like the mid-jungle top side of the map is pretty much just going to be really good at creating space for the for the AD carry, but they're, they are really the big damage dealers for both of these teams, and they have a shielding support, probably going to be giving them an Ardent Sensor buff later on in the game as well. So I'm looking forward to see what these AD carries can do, and... Uh, we do see the pressure coming down from Dusty here early on now in this bottom lane, having both the push and getting the flash on Wendell. I think an important factor there that you have to point out is the choice of starting item for Chrisberg. He has selected to go for the tier rather than Endurance Blade or even a Longsword. Mm. Uh, so not as strong early. Also as went for the heal instead of the TP for the extra power in laning phase. Ooh, Venza coming on through, getting those choppers down, has caught Wendell out with no flash available. He's going to go down. First blood goes over to Dusty's bot later. Yeah, when there's no flash of the karma, it's a really difficult position. Mid lane fight, though. Oh, so, so close, wow. but Cress unable to get that final auto in. Yeah, unfortunately for him there, Backland able to run away with a sliver of HP, has the TP to be able to come back, and then the uh, Unsealed Spell book to be able to get some different useful summoner spell there in a few minutes. Also in the bottom lane there, we could see that Viking actually went in and almost tried to take the kill towards the end there, but did not end up getting any assists. So just the assist on the Ludo and the kill on the Jinx, but that is still a pretty decent early game uh, advantage for Dusty right there in the bottom lane. Finished Noon Quiver right now for the Jinx is going to prove to be quite strong. I'm not sure what Israel is going to be able to pick up here. Perhaps just a couple of long swords. So Venser does have a strong position in this landing phase, and I would love to see Dusty keep playing around this bottom lane. And if they can do so, win condition could well be odd. Backland needs to be a little bit careful about this mid lane, though, as we saw earlier, Cress has got the pressure, and in top lane, it's an Orn, so don't worry about it. It's fine. But... With the jungle matchup being a case attacks that need to control it, how is he going to be able to do if the lanes like bot lane are able to cause issues and create problems without actually needing Viking's intervention? I think for Taxa right now, it's just about hitting that level 6. Get the wards down, control vision for your team, but just power farm to 6, which is exactly what he's doing right now. Has not recalled yet, he's just been clearing top to bot, bot to top, getting all of those camps, trying to get the level 6 and then Look to make some pressure happen to perhaps towards the mid lane. Backland could be a good ganking target. We heard uh, the analyst desk speak about the Oriana Hecarim combo and the strength that they have. But now Taxer might be looking for a play here. Remember, he's not been shopping yet, so no items in his inventory. Perhaps just gonna clear his last camp and then go for the recall. Which should be pretty easy for him to do. The game has not had the most. Fast-paced opening as Aleph's just going to be chased off his wave by Carson, who's just hit six. Of course, a player we've talked about plenty in the first couple of weeks is Carson up in the top side, coming in and performing exceptionally well on this Astralis roster as Dusty used the priority, used the reset to grab themselves the first dragon of the game. The Cloud Dragon should be pretty easy to remove as Backland just guards that river entrance and with the Chemtech being the second... Not going to be seeing that one as a soul for our final game of the week, but Dusty are 
doing everything that they need to do. Of course, they're not the ones who are wanting to play the slower style necessarily, but they've got plenty of scaling. So if the game kind of sits with them having a small gold lead and there's no way for Astralis to get anything going, then maybe they'll feel okay. Absolutely. We'll see here if Alif is going to feel okay, though, as the dive's coming Ooh. in. Yeah, going to be called out. Flash is over Taxo, and he'll just ride away. So Flash burnt, but no kill going over. Yeah, and Taxo here on this Hecarim. I was suspecting it when I saw the face rush rather than the Conqueror, but now it's been confirmed with the first recall that this is going to be the uh, tank Hecarim. Just going to go for that uh, Chemtech... Um, whatever it's called, the speeding item, uh, having a bit of a brain fart right now, but uh, yeah, going for that, uh, the tank Hecarim not going to be dealing any damage, and honestly, mm. I don't think this build is usually that good, uh, since you're not really a threat to the enemy backline, which is pretty much what you need to do against the Jinx. With the Orianna, I guess it's a bit better, because you'll be better at just delivering the ball into the backline, so hopefully for, uh, for Astralis, if you're a Danish fanboy, it's going to prove to be the better build. If you're cool, bug, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, no. that, 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 that's, that, that, that's what I meant, but <laughs> didn't want to call him out. <laughs> ah, I'm, I'm, I'm all here for calling out cool, bug on the show, but right now Astralis not doing too badly, so we can't laugh at him just yet. And of course, Dusty coming out of Iceland, the only representatives from that nation in the NLC this split, and have always been the representative for Iceland, really, in the past couple of seasons when it comes to Nordics. Of course, there are other Icelandic organizations, but very much the leading one as Viking will lead into a charge. Taxa able to move away, not going to be too caught out, but the Rift Herald is still going to be focused down by Dusty. Estrella's hanging around in the neighborhood. Carlson coming in from the top side, potentially for a collapse, but there are lots of members of the Dusty roster here. A fight you feel must be kicking off the eye has popped. It's on 1k. Can Viking secure the objective? Tax is going to be chased away. Taken low. Has to ult to safety as Dustin secure the objective. Wendell is going to be chased back as Viking decides it's better to catch the eye than to force anything further. No kills, but objective secured. Like seeing this from Dusty, they're pretty much playing this uh, as we saw with the Caitlyn Lux earlier on when mm. Bifrost was playing that comp very well. First using the strong bot winning bottom lane to secure the dragon, then roaming them up to Herald, getting priority, getting there first because they had the push, and then getting them ahead in the bottom lane. So Dust is really utilizing this Jinx Lulu winning lane. Well, not winning that hard, but being slightly ahead and having a bit more pressure in the lane. I think they're utilizing mm. that very well, being able to secure two early objectives. Absolutely, and on the flip side, Wendell hasn't been able to get too much going on on the Karma, roaming around, Viking looking mid, jumps onto Crest, won't be able to get the knock-up though, nice ultimate coming on through, back and forth to flash away, but Viking flashes forward and grabs the kill in the mid lane, survives one more tower shot, and we will be able to back off Wendell too slow to the punch, and it's another kill for Dusty. Forced to use both flashes there, but Crest flashed as well, and getting the kill onto Viking, getting him started to snowball, that is definitely pretty good. Also, Wendell was roaming up towards the mid lane there, trying to cover for his mid laner. So that means that Dusty gets one played in the bottom side, as well as a bit of an XP lead FGG now at level 6 compared to Wendell level 5. So I think this is looking pretty solid for Dusty. And I mentioned how much was on the line for Astralis. There are the heavy favorites, but they're still like under a lot of pressure to perform. And they're falling slightly behind right here. We'll have to see how strong the mental game of Astralis is. I mean, it's only two kills. The gold lead is less than 1,000, so we'll have to draw our lines where we do. And Astralis definitely have strong options to scale into, known for their slower style of play. And they haven't given away too much yet, although Viking moving on forward might look to change that getting... The gank going. Will he be able to dive on through? Catches one, but won't be able to dive forward. Looks towards Wendell. Looking for the knock, knock up onto him. And Venza picks up the kill. But now Tax is here. The Jinx is low, but dives on forward toward FGG. Has to ult himself. Zap will land. Polymorph too as Chris Berg goes low with zero mana. Backland and Kress have both arrived on the scene, which will spell the end of aggression. With well, Viking, he has the Rift held in pocket. He has a Jinx, and this tower might not be long for this world. 
Yeah, Jinx and Sin Sao, both great champions, are taking down a tower. And with the Herald, they're going to get first tower, not solo onto the Jinx. It's going to be sharing with the Sin Sao, but still so much gold going over to Venza mm. right now. Huge on this Jinx. And Dusty are just coming to play today. I mean, I was sort of almost touched by the interview that uh, Viking did, uh, did on Monday because he was so disappointed by how the team was playing, saying that they had more in them. And they are showing that so far. I like the way Dusty are playing. And if I was Goldberg right now, I would be shaking a little bit. I mean, Astralis, again, maybe haven't showed up to the races. And this is the first time that we've seen a significant gold lead this game. Two and a half thousand to the good off the back of that Rift Herald investment and that first tower going down. You could already see Venza moving up towards the top side. Smells more plates and FGG and Viking. I've got some license to move around a little bit more and try and get something going elsewhere. But yeah, it's not been the best week so far for the Danish roster, whether they'll be able to come back into this one. And of course, must be noted, it's early days in this game. There's not too much to worry about so far. But Dusty definitely looking the stronger of the two teams right now. I think this is a smart play from Dusty. They're going to be giving Dragon in favor for Venser being able to free hit top lane tower. I mean, it's mm. a bit weird to throw your dual lane to the top lane uh, once Dragon is already up, but Astralis is actually not going to fall for it. They're going to go for the catch onto Ooh. FGG instead. Yeah, he will find FGG going to be forced over the chopper's nice on, but onto two will catch the back line as now Taxa looks towards Venza running for the hill as Viking also fleeing, uses some damage and actually Venza getting the reset will be able to dive away. Carlson follows through and will be able to cut him down. That's an excellent play from Astralis. They call the bluff and pick up two. They did call the bluff indeed. I think it was a strong setup for Dusty, but Astralis just saw exactly what was up right there going for the big, like instead of going for the dragon, which would give um, Dusty a lot of damage on the top lane tower, they went for the catch and you can see the Lulu Jinx against the mm. Renekton Hecarim, like once they're able to gap close, there's not too much that Dusty can do. I mean, Venser plays it quite well, but Carlson on this Renekton just so very, very strong. And with the speed buffs from Orianna and Karma as well, they're just able to run down the enemies and Astralis are now in a pretty decent spot. Mm, find their way back into it, grab a couple of plates also on that top side, so getting some money back in their own pockets, and this is the power of Astralis, they're not in the world's worst position. Yes, there's a couple more kills on the Jinx that you maybe like, but that's fine, we'll just kill Venza. It's whatever. Yeah, we can see what they're trying to do with the setup, they're giving us a free dragon. Nah, no worries, we want to get those couple of kills and get ourselves back onto the rift in terms of gold rather than objectives, which of course does give Dust the opportunity to start up the dragon themselves. And with the positioning of Astralis, I don't think they're too fast. Second one should go down as Aleph on the top side. Not really. Just giving some respect, not up. one to get called out. He's like, nah, I know where you are. And we'll have to see what Dragon we're getting for the last game of the day as the Observers drag us away very rudely. But it is going to be a mountain, so they clearly weren't that interested. And I don't think we are either. Yeah, not the most exciting Dragon. Not the most exciting Rift either, so... Not really too much to say there. Of course, it's going to be pretty decent to strong, but not the strongest Ooh. dragon. Ooh, Viking with a huge damage together with back yeah. and Wendell goes down. Tax has to ult over into the Rift Pit to get away from any kind of collapse coming through from Orn as well. And with that nice pick on to Wendell, it does give Dusty the opportunity to start up this Rift Herald. They've got members in the area. Even Venza has decided to show up and get involved rather than being in a side lane. But with tower plates having already fallen off, there's not as much gold value to be obtained. In fact, let's check in quickly with gold observers. If we could have a quick peek of Rue and look at that from Venza. 1.2k ahead is pretty nice on a Jinx this early on. Yeah, pretty big lead right there. Also decent lead in the jungle uh, for, for Viking. But on the other hand, Kelson is a bit ahead in the top lane. So still sort of close on the gold, but I definitely rather be in Dusty's shoes here, scaling up mm. with this Jinx. Together with the Lulu, I do believe that's going to be a pretty early Ardent sensor. And uh, it's it, it's pretty much anyone's game. Like in these in these team fights, Astralis have a good comp to be able to shut them down. Like Hecker in with Turbo Camp Tank, Ghost, Speed Buff from Karma and Orianna. Like he's going to get on top of your Jinx. The thing is that he can't kill her himself though. So he's going to need some sort of backup there. And the support for the Jinx with that Lulu, with the Zinzao, with the Orn. 
yeah, you can maybe get on top, but are you going to be able to, if you can't explode the Jinx on your own, who's going to be supporting you? Are you going to be able to survive? You've got the Zoe as well, who's going to be a consideration moving forward as well. So questions, lots of questions to be asked of Astralis talent. Will they have answers? We'll have to find out on the next episode of team fighting. But right now it's just a case of sieging and taking down this mid lane tower. We'll be able to do so. And Astralis are going to be chased back for a second charge. I don't think there's going to be too much damage past that. But it's always nice for Dusty to be able to break over the map, especially in this mid lane, and get to fight over these neutral objectives a little bit easier. That was a bit weird. Crest just went top lane without TP and like pushed in a couple of waves, but didn't even stay around to hit the tower. So Astralis couldn't really defend that Rift Herald, was able to actually get a second charge on the tier two tower. I think that is pretty big for Dusty. We'll give him some more control, some more opportunities to put down offensive vision in the enemy jungle and try to starve them off their own uh, off their own jungle. So do you think that was a mistake from Astralis? Yeah, they will be able to grab that bot lane tower though. Carlson cuts it through and Viking very sensibly doesn't look to defend, but rather just holds off behind the tower and allows Venza to come in to lap up the wave. But Dusty are looking particularly strong, not looking like a team that's yet to win here on the NLC stage in 2022. And Astralis running hot and cold at the moment in this game and indeed in the season have started to come back online just a little bit. You said you were more comfortable with Dusty's position. What do Astralis need to be looking at, do you think, for you to change your mind on that? Uh, I think they need to try to keep going for these catches, finding Dusty out of position. They do, like, it's going to be a down to tax here now that he has completed his turbo camp tank. He does have mm. Ghost, he does have Ult, he does have Chilling Smite. Like, he's so fast, he's so good at finding the catches. But uh, he needs to have the proper vision to be able to go for the place, knowing where the enemy team is, and then having the follow-up. So if Astralis is able to find like one or two picks with the Hecarim, that uh, could be really strong. I think they could also try to utilize Carlson's strength in a side lane on this Renekton. There's no one mm -hmm. on Dusty who really wants to split push. So, well, even Orianna like, could pretty much go side lane this game, and there's no one on Dusty who can really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. So... Throwing, going for something like a 1 3 1 with Renekton or Yana, but pushing is also a decent choice here for Astralis. The macro decision maker will have to see. Tax is so quick, dives in but doesn't find Venza. Catches out FGG, who will go down. LF called into the mid lane, but too late to save the spot. Oh! Comes on the other side and he finds Venza. Double kill to Crest. Just like that, Astralis talent do exactly what you said and pick up two amazing set of plays for Astralis right there. First of all, Tax who's setting that catch up really well, just pretty much one-shotting the Lulu who didn't even have time to flash away. But then the TP for us, no, it wasn't even a TP, it was just a straight up flank from Carlson. Like that was really well played, being able to get into that position. Like he just got on top of the Jinx. So let's take a look at what happened. Taxer can just go in for the back line and Venser already using the flash. This is a solid Hecarim play right there. And then Carlson just walks on top of the Jinx and there's nothing that she can do at that point. And there it doesn't matter how fed your Jinx is. It doesn't matter that you've been able to get your AD carry rolling, giving her plates. Like that's irrelevant when there's a Renekton who can just walk on top of you unpunished, use your entire his entire combo and just one shot the Jinx. So really well played for Astralis. And now, just like that, they close the gold lead to 1,000. And if you can remove Venza from team fights the way you did, then one more team fight and it'll be a lead for Astralis. Dusty, back to the drawing board just a little bit, but they only lost those kills. They didn't really lose anything else on the back of it. In fact, have taken... Well, they lost the dragon off the back of it, but it's the first mountain slowed down on the soul and the elder, but... Not going to be losing sleep over that one, you would have thought. But Baron is now on the rift. It's something worth gaining vision for. And Wendell wants to try and prevent Viking from doing just that. And Astralis, you can tell that they've just started threatening a little bit more. And Dusty, maybe a little bit scared. I think they should be a bit scared. Like, this is a strong point for Astralis being able to pretty much equalized the goal and they have that big two item power spike for Chrisberg now he's getting rewarded for starting with that tier as it's been stacking up to complete the Muramana early 
two items across the board pretty much. Well, only on the two big carries as I look at it, but they're still pretty decently strong with the power spikes at the moment. I think just they have to be a bit careful now for a while. And Astralis are taking slow, they're slowly securing a bit of control here in the enemy jungle. Do you like it? Um, speaking of Backland here, he has not been really performing too great this game. Um, I mean, it's not easy to, the easiest champion to pilot the Zoe, but it's not really been able to make any big catches. And I think Backland's previously been one of the stronger players on Dusty, one of the big carries. And I think he needs to step up and find a big catch here if Dusty is about going to, uh, going to win this game and give, get the first win in the LLC. I mean, he has been a little bit quieter. That is certainly true, but what a big catch could be all it takes. One sleepy trouble bubble catching out one member. Metaxa might look to catch out the entire roster. Dives on through, gets onto five, but there's no follow-up immediately. Carlson in the wings, but Dusty just going to scramble out back towards their tower. Yes, they burnt a couple of flashes. In fact, only one flash from FGG. And this time around, Astralis can't make it stick. I think that's just playing a bit too far up there. You really need to secure vision on your sides when pushing up against the likes of Hecarim and Renekton who can go for the Ooh, flanks. Oh, the Oriana also. The engage coming through. Watch Carson. He's looking towards Venza. He cuts him down. Will fall for his troubles, but so does the tower. Dusty lose their main man. And all they cost them is one crocodile. Yeah, pretty big there when the Jinx dies. You don't really have any consistent damage on your team. Yeah, Viking's going to be putting out a little bit, but he's building towards more of the tank as in Zhao. So you do really need to protect the Jinx. And that, of course, is something that Astralis knows. And that is why this crocodile has been eyeing the Jinx over and over in these fights. Did use the flash there, though, so it's probably not going to be there for the next fight, which means it's going to be a bit easier for Venser, who's going to get his own flash up quiet soon and he's going to be able to perhaps survive a little bit longer. Backland dancing around in the mid lane, but Dusty and Astralis both posturing towards the Dragon Pit. Up in a minute, Taxa dives on forward, finds Elif and FGG, but won't be able to find a prime target as Backland dives to and throw over the wall. Venza nowhere to be seen, quite smartly being like, I will be near that, that horse. He's been throwing stuff at me, and I do not like it. So, <laughs> Venza for me is someone who's... The game is going to be won or lost around Venza or Venza's corpse. Yeah, totally agree with you right there. If Jinx dies in these fights, Astralis can win. If Jinx lives and just DPSs through the fight, Dusty's going to win. Um, pretty important. Cooldowns that burn from Taxer, both Ghost and Hecarim multi. Thir 28 seconds now before the potential third dragon here for Dusty, mm. if they're going to be going for this big fight. It looks like they're going to look for it. Well, Venter takes a decent chunk of damage before this one kicks off, but Elif looking for the knock-up, lands it onto Wendell. Look at Venter on the side, though. She's shooting towards Carlson. The Jinx is running rampant. Viking picks up the first kill of the fight, and this time around, it's not the Crocodile that's getting the collapse. Nice off from Crest trying to disengage, but Viking will survive as Venter runs rampant forward, hyped up and ready to go. But too many options, too many avenues means that Dusty just call off the fight and potentially move towards this dragon. Yeah, strong set of plays there for Dusty. Astralis without the Hecarim to be able to engage there without any of his big cooldowns. Look at this, there's no Ghost, there's no Hecarim ulti. So yes, they do have the Shirelias for Wendell, but they're not able to make any good catches here. And the counter engage from Dusty is really good. And you can see Sin Sao and Ord just being this big frontline completely zoning out Crest from the entire fight. Like he's not able to do anything. And then Taxer is just standing really far back as well. So while Chris mm. Berg is throwing some cues, he is... I, I'm not going to say pretty much alone, because of course the rest of his team were still contributing in that fight, but Dusty played that really well, did the zoning really well, and they were rewarded with a third dragon, now one away from a Mountain Soul. And that Mountain Soul give a little bit more survivability. I mean, if Venter can survive half a second longer, as he throws his ultimate directly into Chris Berg's face, then... Members of the team could shot. FGG might just need half a second to get the ult off. Viking might need half a second to ult himself. ALF might be, need half a second to headbutt that massive ram back into the enemy team. So it could prove to be pretty big as Astralis maraud through the enemy jungle. 
Maybe looking to catch someone out. Orn down in the bot side has teleport, oh. but look, they're flagging onto Venza. Nowhere to go. Grab the Jinx. Yes, the ultimate comes through. Cress only catches onto one, but I think this is going to be a complete round as Elif dives into the back line, trying to save FGG. But Lulu, not a priority target, actually able to step away and kill down Taxa. Backland on the back line might look to get onto Chris Berg, but misses the skill shots. Elif will be cut down. Dominus is used, cuts down Lulu, forces the flash from Orn. And Zoe skipping up the top of the screen has nothing that can be done. Orn being chased down the wrong way down the map and can't even dash out. Excellent play from Astralis and Dusty just didn't need to be there. Yeah, very nice catch from Astralis. We can see here Dusty does not have vision, has no idea where they are. And then Tax just coming in from behind. I think he actually missteps a bit with the E right there onto Venser, but is still able to take him down eventually. And then Renekton and Hecarim on your back line. That's not where you want to be if you're a Jinx Lulu. Actually able to live a bit longer than I thought, and they're able to chunk down Astralis pretty well which is actually going to prove to be really important because that means Astralis could not go for the Baron. I believe they did not even attempt to go for it. So um, Orn surviving for quite a while there actually proves to be quite important. Not being able to get Baron is going to be massive as Dusty will be able to lose the fight but not necessarily lose objectives on the back of it as... We dive back into the action. You can see the worm's still standing and Dusty, for the first time in a long time, behind on gold. Yeah, it's 100 and it will be evened out by taking down this wave, but with Astralis finding their way back into this game, they've got late game options. Dusty have late game options. And if one fight goes the way of Astralis into a Baron, we could be talking about them winning in a couple of minutes time. Yep, and there is the Infinity Edge getting finished for Venser here on this Jinx. A mm. big third item going to be coming in with a Chemtrek Putrefire as well for FGG, which is also really big up against the likes of Hecarim and Renekton on the front line. So Jinx is going to be a even bigger threat when that is finished. On the other hand, we've been scaling up quite well on the side of Astralis, though. Notably, the Crown of the Shattered Queen getting finished by Chrisberg makes him significantly harder to kill while he's still going to be able to put down a lot of damage and um, it's going to be quite important the poke war actually between Chris Berg on one side and Backland on the other to see who mm. can chunk out the enemy team uh, more before the fight actually starts and the fight's going to start in one minute ten seconds because that's when the dragon yep. spawns and Astralis do not want to give away this soul whether Dusty want to try and trade? Potentially, they've got a Jinx, they've got a Zinzao. The Baron could go down reasonably quickly. Mm -hmm. And we've now seen both Lady Carries using their ulties to scout out the Baron when no one's been on it. So both can be able to do that with, with Jinx and Ezreal, yeah, for sure. Um, it's going to be able to cue the wave here, which does reduce the cooldown on all of your abilities. So we'll probably have that ulti up again. Yes, he will for the uh, dragon fight because he's level 14 now. So the cooldown is still quiet shirt, but this is going to be a big fight. I think a lot of it's going to come down to who can find the stronger position before the fight. So if Taxer, for example, is going to be able to find the flank or if Carlson's going to be able to do the same thing. Like basically the more chaotic the fight's going to be, the better it's going to be for Astralis. If it's just a standard front to back fight for both teams, Dust is going to be favored. But if Astralis can find the flanks or can make the fight chaotic, they're going to be uh, benefiting from that. Ooh, Orn trying to start a fight. Nice flash from Crest to dodge away from the ultimate, and the fight gets very, very messy, but people go low. Venza is on the back line somewhere, just shooting as much as he can, manages to slip away, but puts the ult directly through Astralis. They part like the Red Sea and look towards Viking. They're not going to be able to find a pick themselves, but the dragon should go down pretty smartly. Dusty could look to contest, but needs to be careful. Skull is going to put the vision in, and now it's going to be secured. Astralis denied the soul, but with Elif coming back in full health, they might try and get members in the pit, get a knock up onto one. Chris Bud goes over the wall as Taxa might be caught out. Venza gets the shutdown, gets excited, gets the resets, and he's now potentially looking for more. Backland secures one as well, as Astralis grab two quick kills. And yeah, they lose out on the dragon soul, but if they can survive a second longer, they might look towards Baron. They have a really good Baron taking team. Well, not not great, but still any team with a fed Jinx, that's going to be a good Baron take. So they will go for it. Backland's going to recall and then teleport back in here. 
Chrisberg actually just using his ultimate. This is gonna be a five versus three situation. Will as well as go for the contest. Looks like it. No smite on Taxer, which is really huge. I think that looks to be about nice 10 master. seconds still. Come off cooldown, and this is gonna be Baron for Dusty, oh, I think. Venza. Baron goes low, but that's the ultimate onto Chrisberg, but the shield keeps him alive from the karma. The Baron will be secured onto five members of Dusty, but no members of Astralis lose their lives. Actually, quite important that Venser uses Flash there, trying to catch up to Chrisberg while not actually being able to kill him. That Flash is going to be huge in the next fight. Although he does actually recall for Quicksilver Sash and a stopwatch, so he does not want to be caught out next time around because that's what happened in that dragon fight i'm not sure if we have a replay of that very important dragon fight but uh, carlson was sitting in a bush without uh thus having any idea that he was there and vence just basically face checks the bush when there's a renekton there gets shunked down almost dies at the start of the fight but in the end is able to live and is pretty much able to carry that fight mm. also need to mention backland i gave him some slack earlier but he played really well in landing some crucial poke onto chrisberg forcing him to arcane shift out of the dragon pit and then just sitting throwing max range cues which is not really where you want to be on that SRL. So Dusty playing that fight well, they are going to now be sieging the base with Baron buff minions. This doesn't look like it's going to be one of those big game-winning Barons, potentially. There's still a lot to be taken outside the base. You look at top tower, the outer's still standing, but Dusty already cleared out the mid lane, will be clearing out the bot lane. And as you mentioned, last fight, Venza got caught out, but Venza survived, which is maybe good signs for Dusty, as they might say, well, now we know that we can keep our carry alive, especially with Stopwatch and a Quicksilver Sash to boot, as Venza getting aggressive, and they talk about it on the desk, not wanting to backline, but Carlson's looking for a flag, Taxa's looking for a catch, and Venza on the backline's looking for a way out, but really nice play to catch out Renick, a nice ultimate coming through as well, as Venza pops QSS and might be able to pop members of Astralis' team. Moving forward, one more shot, two more shots, will it be enough? Nice break up on the backline from Taxa to save Carlson's life. The members of Astralis do go low, Dusty feeling comfortable to continue this push onto Inhibitor at least. But I think that's all she wrote. I mean, someone should go check on Goldberg right now. Is he okay? Like, this is uh, Astralis looking sort of shaky, getting outplayed by a Dusty who's 0 and 3 right now. They're looking to be in a great position while Astralis, I mean, can you even call them a top team? If uh, this is how they perform in a game against Dusty, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's week two, it's a difficult one to call because. Yeah, they lose to Eminem if they come out and lose to Dusty, and the game is by no means over, but 4,000 gold is a notable lead with Baron still on the backs of members of Dusty. And the, the league is, it was very predictable week one, but we've had a couple of upsets involving a couple of teams, and Astral is definitely at the center of that so far, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. The Nexus still stands, and Astral's talent have shown that they have the ability to take team fights, one big one, as Baron falls off, could well get them well back into this game. A couple of good performances as Crest cats out Venza once again, who gets a little bit over aggressive and Venza just needs to start being a little bit more careful about going near bushes that don't have wards in them. Yeah, he's been playing with a lot of confidence, which is both a good and a bad thing. Like he's been uh, he's been getting caught out here a couple of times. Not going down though, is able to survive and does still have that stopwatch as now well as now the uh, Mercurial Scimitar, which is definitely a good fit, good thing for him. Notable to see in the build is no life steal in the items. I guess he has Legend Bloodline because he's still life stealing up a bit, but he's not. Really gonna be able to sustain that up. Here we go. The horn, the knock up lads on the two this time around. They look for Crest, they break up the fight. Venza on the back line, keep an eye on him to see if Astralis can get a re engage going. But Carlson has been gone out, has to use Dominus defensively as the dragon will spawn onto the map. This could be the decisive team fight as Taxa burns on forwards. Can't find anyone important though and has to ride away. Backland dives forward, cannot get a pick. And it's a lot of throwing and it's a lot of dodging from this fight as we see Dusty lose priority over the dragon. A nice catch from Venza on to Chrisberg. Teleport coming on forward as they look towards this dragon. It's two and a half K. Who will be able to secure it? Viking looking for it. Will grab it. And there's the soul for Dusty. Astralis in retreat. But it looks like with Cress's ultimate, they'll be get it, able to get away for now.
They got the mountain soul there, and while that was going on, a huge minion wave came into the bottom side for Astralis. I think, yeah, they were actually able to save the Nexus Towers with uh, Carlson recalling, but will they be able to save their base now? Dust is gonna go in. All back on looking to get a catch, won't be able to find it, but the second inhibitor is the focus of the rest of the team. Dusty secure it. And you can see Venza, he's, he's like, oh, can we engage? And the rest of Dusty's like, maybe not, maybe. Let's just play this one a little bit safe. Ultimate coming through from Chrisberg just to grab a little bit of poke damage. But he's not doing very much to that Orn, who's tanking up all of the shots as Viking moves bot to try and bring minions in to tank up towers. One of them is less than half health as Dusty look to try and close this one out. The Horn has been cool once again. Nice knock up as Nexus Tower 1 is the lead. Attack to die from through, but he's not using it on Venter, who gets the deletion, almost killing Chris Berg. The ultimate will land on to Crest, though, as they pick up another tower. Attack to die back on forward as Venter goes golden. The stopwatch saves its life. And just like that, the script are torn asunder. Dusty secure their first win of the NLC spring season as Astralis lose both games in week two. What a showing from Dusty. I mean, they're just out playing Astralis pretty much from start to finish, and now they're playing with their food. This is how you establish dominance, not even killing the Nexus until you're forced to. Wow, Dusty, that is impressive. And Astralis, that was not very impressive. It's, we, we asked a couple of questions of Astralis in week one. We said, yes, they're 2-0, but their style of play is slow. They're not necessarily able to close out these games and they've maybe been fortunate to win them. Or is it a case of them knowing how to run the tempo and knowing how to control games perfectly? It was what we saying when they played against Nariki. The question now has to be asked with a greater asterisk because... Eminem and Dusty, you look at the performances going into week two, you'd think Astralis' talent should be 4-0. They're coming out of this week 2-2, two, yeah. two, and what questions have you asked them? All credit to Dusty. I think they played fantastically well. Venza needs to be a little bit less aggressive, but past that, everything looked really, really good for them, and really happy to see them grab their first win here. And I do like that it looks like they're starting to find an identity playing around this, like, sort of mm. protect the carry comp. It wasn't that big of a protect the carry comp, but that's sort of, like, if you had to say an identity, that was going to be it. And it worked out really well. It was against one of the stronger team, at least what we consider to be one of the stronger teams in the league. So I think that's also a positive for Dusty. Having, uh, I mean, they've been getting some direction as to where they should go from here what they should be working on going into the next weeks and i think they got a big confidence booster going into week three as well that is a massive point that you've just made because going into week three they're gonna have to try and start picking up these wins if they want to get towards that mid table or challenge for playoffs i know it's a conversation that we're going to have to have, but we're not going to have it. It's going to be in the post show that people are going to be talking to. We have interviews, we have games, and we have Arkham's beautiful face. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you in a few minutes.